my brother Daryl and this my other brother Daryl. Could we borrow 150 pounds of sugar? Could you make do with a cup of sugar? Nope. One cup ain't gonna hold the door open. Larry, you don't need sugar for that. Have you ever considered using, oh, a, a rock? Whoa. You got some kind of engineering background or something? Hi, everybody. I have great news. I'm going to redecorate my room. You are? Every so often, I change it around so I don't fall into a rut. How, how often do you do it? Every 10 years. In April. On a Monday. After lunch. But this time, I'm pretty much out of ideas. So, Joanna, could you... Oh, George... I'm not sure we have the same taste. Joanna, you have the best taste of anybody I know. Then obviously you need to get to know Daryl better. <laughs> He's the one that came up with that dirt idea for the floor of our cabin. <laughs> you might be able to woo him as a consultant. Well, that's very nice of you fellas, but uh, I did ask Joanna first. That's okay. Daryl is priced a little bit out of your league. <laughs> so, Joanna... Okay, George, I'll come up in an hour and make a few suggestions, but that's all. An hour? You could give a guy some notice. <laughs> Here's your breakfast. Stephanie, just, just a hint. It's bacon and eggs. Not bacon, then eggs. <laughs> Morning, Stratford Inites. We interrupt this breakfast for a Michael Harris bulletin. I'm going away for a week. Michael! Save those boo-hoos, Steph. I've got a big job interview. Michael! In Syracuse. Michael. Cupcake, Syracuse is up and coming. It's often called the New York of Central New York. Michael, you just can't take off for a week. Who's going to produce Vermont today? No problema. I've asked Alma Sprout to fill my floor shots. The station's receptionist? Well, what does she know about producing a television show? Not a hell of a lot. But in case I don't get the job, watch my stock rise. <laughs> Alma will be fine. This week, I've lined you up with the perfect guest. Name, Mr. Ned Nicholas. Occupation, build models of national monuments out of Cherry Lifesaver. <laughs> That's the Supreme Court building. It is? Come on, Dick, you're the history buff. I don't want Ned Nicholas and his candy models. Very bad candy models. I want Dmitry Alexandrov. Come again? Dmitry Alexandrov. The, the guy who, uh, who spent 10 years in a Russian gulag and then escaped to the United States. Dick, Dick, the U.S., Russia, us, them. What can you say that hasn't already been said? <laughs> Michael. Whoops, oh, I've got a plane to catch. Oh, bye, Steph. We now return you to your regularly scheduled breakfast. <laughs> Mr. Loudon, I'm Alma Sprout. I'm really excited about producing your show this week. Yeah, yeah, this, uh, this... <laughs> candy architect should, should really be, uh... Be, be something. Oh, yes, it'll be fascinating to see what the Washington Monument will look like if it's red and... and round. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll probably want to, uh... want to build to that. <laughs> I, I know I'm brand new at this job, and, and it's probably not my place to say, but this guest is really stupid. <laughs> oh, Alma. <laughs> but what, what, what can we do? He's, he's already booked. Well, let's give him the old heave-ho. <laughs> well, we can't just cancel him, can we? So, who should we book instead? Can, can we really do this? Come on. Who's your dream guest? If you could have anyone on the face of the earth, who would it be? At this moment, you. <laughs> but, uh, but my second choice would be Dmitry Alexandrov. The escaped Russian? Oh, he'd be a great guest. Yeah, but how would we get a busy guy like that on such short notice? Easy. I know his secretary. 
and I have the recipe for a stroganoff that'll make him hustle his bunskies right over here. <laughs> so, what sort of changes do you usually make? Uh, well, uh, ten years ago, I moved this from over there. Uh, ten years before that, I moved it from over there. Ten years before that, it wasn't here, so I bought it. Well, how do you use the room? To read, to watch television, to work? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, now that you've got a handle on the private me, what should this place look like? This. <laughs> Come on, there must be something you could do to improve this place. Well, nothing really. Maybe I'd add a splash of color. Whoa, color! <laughs> what kind of color? Oh, what's your favorite? Boy, they're all so nice, I don't know. How about blue? Blue, that's my favorite! No offense to the others. Well, you could have a blue bedspread. A blue bedspread? <laughs> Joanna, you've got to do it. Have your way with this room. I'll stay at the inn. Don't show it to me until you're done. Well, it might be kind of fun. I did see some nice curtains at Benford's. Curtains! <laughs> George, I'll do it, okay? When I finally step off plane, I realize at last I am free. I threw myself to the ground. I took dirt, I put it in my mouth. I, I wanted to taste freedom. Oh my God, it was sweet. Wow. Yeah, and another thing I, I, I'd love to ask you. Oh, Don, we're, we're out of time. Join us next week on Vermont Today. And we're clear. Well, that, that, was, uh, that was wonderful. I, I, I grew as, as a human being. Thank you, Dick. You must buy my book. <laughs> Could someone help me carry six quarts of stroganoff to trunk of my Coupe de Ville with Landau roof? <laughs> uh, you must say goodbye to the lovely Mrs. Sprout. Dick, this show was good. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, JJ. No, I mean it. It was good. Normally, I don't go in for this public affairs stuff, but today, five minutes into the show, we completely forgot our Trivial Pursuit game. You play games while you're directing my show? Well, keeps the guys in the booth from nodding off. But today, the game was almost, well, a distraction. Thanks to this little lady right over here. Thanks. Oh, oh JJ, would you help me clear things off the set? Oh, Alma. I made some butterscotch chewies. With peanut butter? <laughs> Dick, I think you've hit your stride. This show moved me. When he told about finally getting a letter from his wife and they had censored everything except the words continued on next page, I wept. Well, thanks, thanks, Bill. I, I know you're looking for a replacement in case uh, Michael gets the, the Syracuse job, and I, I just want to say I'd like to, to recommend that girl. Well, from what I've seen today, she's great, but Michael phoned. He didn't get the job. Oh. So, so he'll be... Um... He'll be staying on. You don't sound too happy about that, Dick. He's... he's staying on. Whoopee. Well, he doesn't have to stay. You mean, uh... You mean fire him? Well, he wouldn't really be fired. He does a bunch of other shows for us. Oh, that, that's true. He's got, uh... Cartoon Lagoon, uh, Sewing with Susie, <laughs> Binky the Clown... Um, hey, hey, you farmer. 
the, uh, the, the Mr. Sing With Me hour? <laughs> you want Alma, don't you? Well, this is Michael's most important show. I mean, you're the station manager. You make up your mind, I'll, I'll abide by your decision. Good, because I've decided to let you decide. Michael or Alma, but just tell me by tomorrow. <laughs> show George's room. He is such a pack rat. I had to find a place in the garage for 20 years of boy's life. <laughs> Sounds pretty. Oh, honey, are you still worried about Alma and Michael? About Alma and Michael? You remember last night you suggested I try to think of all the good things Michael had done for me? Yeah. All I could come up with was the time I was walking in the driveway and he swerved to miss me. <laughs> Sounds like you should go with Alma. Are you nuts? That would crush... <laughs> that would crush Michael. Then I guess you'll stay with him. That's stupid. <laughs> Alma just produced the best show I ever did. I mean, uh, shouldn't uh, kindness, decency, and, and skill be rewarded? Yes. No. <laughs> I don't want to fire Michael. I, I do feel something for him. Uh, the kind of affection you, you feel for a, for a puppy uh, that you don't like very much. <laughs> I mean, what, what the hell am I going to do? I have to decide between Michael. <laughs> between Michael and... Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Stephanie, I, I didn't know you knew. How can I not know something that's going to destroy Michael like this? There's nothing definite about it yet. What do you mean? These are definitely split ends. <laughs> and in case you didn't say it loud enough, yes, everybody, Stephanie Vanderkellen has split ends. <laughs> Okay. Well, what do you think? It's the most beautiful room I ever saw. I never... Whoa, that was close. <laughs> George, relax. The rug is there for you to walk on and enjoy. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, what a lovely bedspread. It's a 200-year-old antique. Uh... <laughs> And wow, look at those pretty cushions. I'm glad you like them. Did you notice the way the raspberry candies bring out the color in those throw pillows? I'm sorry, I didn't. <laughs> Boy, this looks comfy. Aren't you going to sit in it? I can't, it'll wrinkle. No, no, it won't sit. I can't. Sit. I can't. Sit! I can't. See, it did wrinkle. No, it didn't. Well, gee, it did wrinkle. Hi. To be brief, it's us. <laughs> We're here to wish you a happy room warming. Get off the rug! <laughs> I'm sorry. Why don't you make yourselves comfortable? Not on the bed! You three guys can sit on the wrinkled chair. <laughs> Daryl likes what you've done with the room. Thank you. That's very flattering coming from a decorator. I'm afraid you're barking up the wrong Daryl. <laughs> The decorator, Daryl, feels you've made ineffectual use of your space. No offense, guys, but I think Joanna has created a warm, comfortable, inviting... Don't touch the candy! Yikes! <laughs> oh, dear, look how late it's gotten. Come on, Daryl. We'd like to thank you for a lovely time. 
And if you're thinking about having any more parties, we can RSVP you right now. No. <laughs> You hate it. No, I love it. I love it so much I could never, never, never live in it. <laughs> Everything is so clean, so neat. Clean is the problem? Neat is the problem? I guess so. <laughs> if the Board of Health says it's okay. <laughs> Come in. Hi, Dick. Your prodigal producer has returned. Michael, I, I, I want to talk to you. Sure thing. Oh, between you, me, and the, uh, and the lamppost, how did, uh, how did Alma do? <laughs> Alma was, was terrific Swell Well, I must remember to give her one of my patented well-dones um, Michael, I, I need to talk to you Say no more, Dick I know you You want to offer your condolences about the Syracuse job Well, forget it <laughs> I realize that that was not the job for this up-and-comer I'd rather be here around people I trust And pardon my mush Really get off on <laughs> Michael. Besides, it's harder to burst on the scene from Syracuse. There have been studies. <laughs> oh, by the way, now the word I'm giving the underlings here is that I'm the one who turned them down. It's important to have the respect of the people you work with, no matter how much you have to lie. <laughs> uh, Michael, sometimes we, uh, we, we go away and, and when we come back, things aren't the same as, as they used to be. Wow, that's profound. Up for lunch? <laughs> Michael, you're... You're, a, you're a, an okay producer. But, but Alma is better. And that's why I'm, I'm hiring her for Vermont today and... and, re, and reversing the process for, for you. <laughs> Couldn't hear you, Dick. <laughs> you're, uh, you're, you're sort of fired. What? I'm, I, I'm sorry. Fired? But, but only from Vermont today. I mean, you still have all those, all those other shows. Michael, I... No, don't touch me. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to touch you. <laughs> Vermont today was my show. I... I created it. I created you. I made you what you are today. You backstabber. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dick. But after this slap in the face, I don't think I can work with you again. Well, that's, that's kind of good. <laughs> because, as I said, you, you, you won't. <laughs> Michael, I just got a call from Syracuse. They saw Sunday's Vermont today and offered me a job. The one you said they could shove. <laughs> and Syracuse is close to my daughter. Oh, I owe all this to both of you. Is this a happy day or what? <laughs> Well, Dick, looks like, uh, looks like you're out of producer. And, uh, you can just forget this guy. <laughs> Beg and weep all you want. The fact is, I could never come back to Vermont today. I, I, I understand, Michael, and 
maybe it's best that we we both part company and and start fresh. Please, Dick! Please! Please, I want to come back! Please, please! I'll beg if I have to! Mike, Michael, be, before you lose your pride... I'll do anything you want, anything, just to get my job back. We, we have different tastes. We, we, we've never uh, agreed on, on a guest for the show. Just, just, just tell me. Tell me who you want, and I'll, I'll write it. On, I'll write it on the form. Dr. Raoul Finch, the paleontologist. <laughs> how about if he came in on the arms of some local cheerleaders? Michael. He could talk about how their bones differ from those of Cro-Magnon cheerleaders. <laughs> Michael. All right, Dick. You pick the guests. <laughs> no arguments. So, what do you say? Am I... Am I still... Your producer? I, I know I'm going to regret this more than I already do. But... <laughs> okay. <clears throat> that, that's the finest thing. That's the finest thing I've ever seen a human being do. <laughs> well, from now on, it's going to be a whole new show. And a whole new me.